In this video, I'm going to show you how to get to my setup with RetroArch for use with the light gun games. So I actually struggled with this for a good couple of days, and this is due to the fact that we're using raw input, which throws a spanner in the works when we're trying to configure RetroArch, especially for two player light gun games. Now I came across a bunch of issues, things like input bindings not saving on a per game basis, and the way that RetroArch actually flips between D input and raw input caused me some issues. But the long and short of it is, is that I found a super easy workaround that works pretty much 100% of the time. And this is the workaround. Essentially, this is a pre-configured per game config file that you can just copy and paste. Now I'm going to pop this in the description below to make things nice and easy. And all you need to do is just make a config file, copy and paste this into it, name that exactly to your ROM, and then place that in the correct file. Now I'm going to take you through that process step by step. And I'm also going to show you how to save these games to Lightgun on a per game basis. Before we do that, we actually need to do one thing in RetroArch. So start RetroArch up, go over to settings, go down to input and go all the way down to port one controls. And now we want to scroll down to the Lightgun inputs, which are right here. If you have inputs bound here, like I do, you actually need to delete these out. And this is because if you have inputs bound on a per game configuration and in the main configuration, they are going to clash. So we're just going to press delete on these. Just press the delete key on your keyboard, go through, delete all of those out. And then we're going to go to port two and make sure that the same has been done here. Yep. They've already been removed. And then you want to make sure that you save that. So I've got mine to save when I exit. But if you don't have that, you will need to save current configuration. Now we've got that out of the way, I'm going to show you what the process is to set this up on a per game basis. So go into the RetroArch file system, go into the config folder. And depending on how you have your config files set to save, these may be separated into core folders or it all just might be in one big folder. So I've got mine separated and I'm going to be using House of the Dead 2 as an example for Dreamcast. Now we're using Flycast for that one. So I'm going to go into there and then I'm going to right click and create a new text document. And I'm going to name this to my ROM name exactly. And I've got this memorized. House of the Dead 2 and then it's comma the and it's USA region. There we go. Now we actually want to change this to a configuration file. So we need to delete txt on the end and put CFG there instead. Press enter, press yes. And then we want to open that up, go back to our file here, in which case that'll be in the description below. Copy that out there, paste that into there and hit save. Now, after we've done that, we actually now want to start House of the Dead 2. As soon as the game starts up, you want to press F1. And in the quick menu, go down to controls go to port one controls and we want to change the device type to light gun. We also want to do the same for the port two controls, change that to light gun. And there we go. And now we want to save a remap file for this game specifically as we want it to be the exception, not the rule. So we're going to save that. Then we're going to go back to the game. As you can see, I've got two cursors on the screen here. Oh yeah, so I'm going to start up again. There we go. Now this is a reminder that these games will need calibrating in their game options. And if it's an arcade game, it's going to need calibrating in its test menu. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So let's go down to options, gun calibration. I need to shoot up there, down there. And there with the first player. There we go. Need to do the same for the second player. There we go. And we can see that's all been set. So let's start up a game and shoot some zombies in the face, guns akimbo style. Let's just press player to start. Skip that. Skip all of this. Oh 
oh yeah that's working working perfectly so there we go that's everything that you need to do to get two my setup just make sure you do that on a per game basis now to see what I've set for these inputs, just take a look at the configuration file here and you can see exactly what I've set. Now the one, two and three next to these mouse inputs, one means left mouse click, two means right mouse click and three means the middle mouse click. And not all of these games are gonna have the same inputs across the board. So for example, some of the arcade games, reload is actually auxiliary A. So for those games, I would actually change three to two and two to three and then save it. So it's all correct. So essentially these inputs here can change game to game. So with arcade games, select is coin. You might want that to be on a different button. So yeah, you might want to test out a game, find out what does what, and then make your adjustments here and you must make your adjustments in the configuration file, not in RetroArch itself. One major piece of advice that I need to give is that you need to make sure that the game that you're playing is actually two player light gun. So it might say that it's two players, but what it really means is that it's one player light gun and a second player controller. And you need to make sure that the core is even compatible with light gun usage and it's compatible with two player light gun usage. And some consoles have quite odd implementation so you are going to need to take some extra steps and research what you're trying to play if it doesn't work straight out the gates. What this does is just allows for two players to use two mice and that's it. All the rest is down to the core and how it's implemented with its light gun. So just make sure that you do your due diligence just so you're not having to chase your tail. If it's possible, this will allow for it. There we go, that's how to get RetroArch set up with two mice and being able to save everything on a per game basis. Now, if you find this kind of content helpful, give me a like. And if you wanna keep up to date with my quest to make emulation easy, then sling me a subscribe and hit the bell. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.